morning, dear friends, and welcome to this Holy Mass of Monday, the 23rd week in ordinary time. In today's Mass, prayers will be offered for you as requested, offered for your families, offered for your friends, offered for the concerns and the intentions you have in your heart today. Today, here in our country, we also celebrate Labor Day, where we offer thanks to God for the gift of human labor and for the fruits of human labor. But today, I'd like to pray for people who are unable to participate in that labor industry, those who are unemployed, those who are unable to work, those who are seeking for work, those who are struggling under the burden of this economy because of the coronavirus. That God may help our policy makers to resolve their differences and seek a way forward for every one of our citizens. I also like to pray for those who are sick, pray for our healthcare workers, pray for all those in the healthcare ministry, that God may bless their work, that God may bless their efforts, especially for those who are involved in looking for ways to provide vaccines or other therapeutics to help combat this virus, that the Holy Spirit may continue to provide guidance, inspiration and direction. Pray for those whose businesses or whose, um, whose work is on hold, that God may provide an atmosphere that is conducive for them to return back to work. I'll invite you to bring your intentions and let us pray, as we also pray for those who have birthdays or anniversaries. Our opening hymn today will be, Holy God, we praise your name. Holy God, we praise thy name. Lord of all, we bow before thee. All on earth, thy sects are clean. All in heaven, above adore thee. Infinite, thy vast domain. Is thy wing infinite thy vast domain everlasting is thy wing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My dear friends, to prepare ourselves for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and be sorry for them. For all those of God who are without employment, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For all those who, Lord, who had employment that lost it, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. For those who, Lord, who struggle and bear the bigger burden in this economy under this virus, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, it is widely reported 
that there is immorality among you, an immorality of a kind not found among, among pagans, even among pagans. A man sleeping with his father's wife, and you are inflated with pride. Should you not rather have been sorrowful? The one who did this deed should be expelled from your midst. I, for my part, although absent in body, but present in spirit, have already, as it as it pronounced judgment on the one who has committed this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you have gathered together and I am with you in spirit, with the power of the Lord Jesus, you are to deliver this man to Satan for the destruction of his flesh, so that his spirit may be saved on the day of the Lord. Your boasting is not appropriate. Do you not know that the little yeast leavens all the dough? Clear out all your clear out the old yeast, so that you may become a fresh batch of dough. Inasmuch as you are on leaven, our Paschal Lamb, inasmuch as you are on leaven, for our Paschal Lamb, Christ, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast, not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lead me in your justice, Lord. Lead me in your justice. For you, O God, delight not in wickedness. No evil man remains with you. The arrogant man may not stand in your sight. You hate all evildoers. Lead me in your justice, Lord. You destroy all who speak falsehood. The bloodthirsty and the deceitful, the Lord abhors. Lead me in your justice. But let all who take refuge in you be glad and exalt forever. Protect them that you may be the joy. Lead me in your justice, Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia. My sisters and brothers, with you and with your spirit, Reading from the Holy Gospel according to you. Glory to you, Lord. On a certain Sabbath, Jesus went into the synagogue and taught. And there was a man there whose right hand was withered. The scribes and the Pharisees watched him closely to see if he would cure on the Sabbath so that they may have they, may, they might discover a reason to accuse him but he realized their intentions and said to the man with the withered hand come up and stand before us and he rose and stood there then jesus said to them i ask you is it lawful to do good on the sabbath rather than to do evil to save life rather than to destroy it. Looking around at them all, he then said to them, Stretch, he just he then said to him, Stretch out your hand. He did so, and his hand was restored. But they became enraged and discussed together what they might do to Jesus. The Gospel Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, this is, uh, this has been a very difficult period the last um, several months for a lot of people. 
everyone on the face of the earth has been affected by these last several months. Now, affected doesn't mean affected negatively because there are some who have been affected positively. There are those who have benefited, whether that is financially, or benefited in a lot of other ways from this virus. But everyone has been affected, touched in some way, good or bad, negative or positive. Now, for all of this, some have been affected more than others. So we all don't bear the burden the same way. There are those who still have their jobs, still get a paycheck. There are those who have never had a paycheck for a long time right now. There are those who never have to worry about feeding their children. There are many who worry every day what the next day, the next week would mean for them. There are those who have been sickened by this virus, who are unable to go back to work because in some way their health has been compromised. There are those who are still grieving the loss of someone that they cared about, that they loved. And their lives, lives haven't changed in ways that may alter a lot in their own lives for a long time to come. There are kids who cannot go back to, to regular schooling or play with their friends or do things that they normally would want to do. There are seniors who never have to find, who live alone and never get visits you know, from their loved ones because they fear the consequences of those visits in case this virus is passed on to them. So, so there's a lot of suffering. Even in our church, some churches are still running at maybe 25 or 50 percent capacity and so so churches are also struggling with their own finances and struggling with their own ministry bring communion to the sick or bring communion to seniors you, you don't know if you're carrying a disease so so there's a lot of um, consternation around the world at this time Today, in our country, we celebrate Labor Day, which in the rest of the world is celebrated on May 1st, which is Workers' Day, or the Feast of St. Joseph the Worker. And, and as I think about on how different people are enduring this moment, it becomes clear to me, and I'm sure it's clear to you, that there's a lot of suffering in the world today. It's a lot of pain. It's a lot of grief in the world today. When you look about around our own country and recognize that an average of about 1,000 people still die every day from this virus. Now think about all of those connected to this 1,000 people in each day. And think about the grief that they have to endure. And think about the changes that their lives have to, have to face. That's a lot of pain being passed around. That's a lot of suffering, anxiety, and distress being passed around. So there's a lot of suffering. But most of us have become so desensitized from the sufferings of others. We have become so insulated in our own comfort that we don't feel the pain of others. Life for some, it's almost normal. We are able to do our things. Right now there are people who are out celebrating Labor Day, maybe in the beaches or somewhere else. And may not be doing or taking precautions to make sure we take we handle and manage this virus well. So there are too many people who live in their own comfort zones and don't care about what else is happening. To their neighbors, to the child who was born and has battled the entire time in her life or his life because he or she was born with some deformity or some condition. Today we are invited in the gospel as believers. The sadness, the sad news in most of all of this is that people who have become so desensitized committed. People who are 
encouraging others to do wrong. And supposedly believers, supposedly Christians, they go to church on Sunday and then flout every other law the rest of the week. And that is very concerning. Every day I think we cry and scream and yell about how religion is under attack. And every day I look at our church and I'm saying to myself, we are not attacked as much from outside as we attack ourselves from inside. Because based on our conduct and our actions, we are doing a greater disservice to our church and to our faith and to our beliefs than anyone could ever do from outside. Look, iron is so strong, they say, that nothing from outside can destroy it within, with its own rust. And I think that's what is happening in our church today. Because the kind of things believers spew out, not only inhumane, but they are a disaster and I'm sure an embarrassment to the gospel message of Christ. So today we are invited to reflect on your place and your role in the midst of this pain. Is it just a spectacle for you? Is it just something that makes the headlines for you? Exploited for all kinds of reasons, political or otherwise? This pain is real for many people. And as believers, there's something we can do. You see what is happening here in the Gospel reading? Jesus goes into a synagogue. This is a sacred place. But supposedly, all those who gathered here came to worship God in the synagogue. They didn't come to for a movie. They came to worship God. You would hope that the disposition would be one of compassion, of understanding, of the desire to make everyone better, feel better being in that space. No, that wasn't what happened here. Among all of those that gathered, there was one person who was suffering more than everyone else. You know who, 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 whose attention was drawn to that person? It was the Lord. Scripture says Jesus recognized that there was a man in that assembly who had a weed at hand. And he looked around and saw that no one else cared about that man's condition. No one else cared about what that man had had to endure his entire life. The Lord Jesus cared. And I'm sure he hopes that you and I will care about the pain that is being passed around right now. And scripture tells us he had to, when he realized that no one else cared, all they cared about was laws, spiritless, soulless laws that do not do any good to anyone because those laws are easy and are simple to keep the difficult laws like getting involved in the messy life of someone else that is just too much we can't do that so they were going to observe the Sabbath observing the Sabbath was more important for them than the life of a human being and sometimes I see that you know, us Catholics, pro-life Catholics, all of us, we, we don't care about the life of anyone else. We don't care. We say we are pro-life. I'm like, really? Yes, if we are pro-life, we must care, not just about the unborn child. We must care about that child on the first day of that child's birth and care about that child in her first birthday, her second birthday, her tenth birthday, her twentieth birthday, her eightieth birthday. And even her 90th birthday, and God blessings, her 100th birthday. Because as Catholics, we care about blue lives, we care about every life. And sometimes it's crazy. I'm, I'm saying to myself, do we really know what we believe as Catholics, as pro life Catholics? Here were people who gathered and did not care about the life of a man with a withered hand. 
And Jesus said, is it okay for one to save life on the Sabbath or to destroy, to kill, or to give life? They did not say nothing. They were all silent because they really don't care. And maybe that's, that's me, that's you. I don't know, I hope not. And then the Lord Jesus goes on to do what he thought was right, not minding the opinion of all those who gathered who didn't care. So I want us to take lessons from here. First, that like the Lord Jesus, you and I would have the eyes of compassion, the eyes of care and love to recognize pain in our midst, to recognize sorrow, to recognize the, mis the, 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 the miserable people around us whose condition is made most impossible whether by policies or just by the callousness of neighbors. Listen, there is no gospel more powerful than when we witness to what we believe. With our own life, with our actions, to what we believe. There is no gospel more powerful than that. No gospel more compelling than that. And so the Lord Jesus goes on to heal this man. There are so many of us who are so um, who are too concerned about people's opinion. Sometimes I read the news and I hear how many people are afraid to tell their neighbors who they want to vote for because they don't want to be understood or to be understood or perceived in some way. Mm -hmm. I'm saying to myself, really? You are afraid for your neighbors to know who you're voting for? There might be something wrong with that vote if you are too afraid for someone to know what you're voting for. We, we have become so um, opinion seekers. We have become opinion seekers who worry about how people perceive us and how people think of us. If Jesus worried about how people perceived him, he would not do this miracle. Because more people perceive him but poorly by doing this miracle than less. I'm sure the only person who may have perceived him right was this, the sick person and maybe his family or friends. Everyone has perceived him poorly. Too many times where we are afraid to be perceived poorly, even when what we are doing is wrong, only because more people are proof of that behavior. We are constantly impacted by peer, peer pressure. See many people who battle about wearing masks, for instance, or not wearing it. We've made all of that too. A peer pressure kind of thing. Where when you are among people who don't like wearing masks, you are ashamed to wear it. No, just do the right thing. Not how that is perceived by others. Just do the right thing. That's what the Lord did. And that's what we see from even the second reading, or the first reading rather. Scripture tells us in the towards the end of that reading it says Do you not know that the little yeast leavens all the dough? The little yeast, that little thing that you can do, can have ripple effects. Whether good or bad could have ripple effects. So I encourage you to do dear friends. If you keep not an opinion you must care about, not mine, not anyone's. Care about what God knows and thinks of you. Pray that God may help us, especially at this time where there's so much suffering in the world, that we don't shrink from getting involved only because of how someone might think of you. That we truly become witnesses to the pro-life message and respect life. It doesn't matter whether that life is black, white, child, old, whatever, male, female, straight, gay, as long as it's life that we respect and protect and defend that life. That's what Jesus did here. In a culture of death, we must speak the message of hope for every life. So always I'd like to end my reflections by reminding you that you are the delight of God Almighty. God loves you very much. Let us pray. At the end of time, 
God will send his angels to gather his chosen into his kingdom as we pray for human needs. So we ask that we may be found worthy on that unknown day. That the church may constantly prepare people to welcome Christ when he returns. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who guide nations may receive divine mercy and may establish policies that protect and improve the dignity of every life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the tragedies caused by nature or human cruelty will not weaken our faith in our institutions, but may even inspire us to fight every day to defend and to uphold all of those institutions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all gathered here will remain watchful in prayer, looking forward to the day, to the power and glory of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those without employment, for those who are seeking employment, for those who have borne the burden of this virus, financially and otherwise, more than anyone else, that they may fear the comforting of God and the assurance of His Spirit as He leads them back to recovery. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all believers, that we may recognize our role and our place in the church and witness every day by our actions, by our deeds, and by the things we say and our conducts, our attitudes, to the power of God's love, constantly operational in his communities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dead and for those we have lost especially to this virus, that God may grant them rest and peace. And for those whose hearts are broken, whose lives have been changed forever, that they may know God's comforting, God's support, and God's peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who celebrate birthdays or anniversaries, that the good Lord may grant them many more opportunities to celebrate and be merry. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us ask our blessed mother to intercede for us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed I Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made, which become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed I Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruits of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of His holy church. Amen. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery we may be faithfully united in mind and heart. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. 
will lead them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always stands everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. So with the angels and the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we are clean. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like a dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Mm -hmm. Do this in memory of me. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and bore the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you, humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the re resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs with eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us rise and pray in the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. The Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always, and with your spirit. My dear friends, from me to you, may God's peace rest and abide now and always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. But I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Let only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us ask for grace of spiritual communion. Most merciful God, today you show us that human life is preeminent and that care and protection of the dignity of life from birth to natural death is a prerogative of every believer. We pray, dear God, that as we receive of this sacrament, whether physically or spiritually, we may have the strength and the courage to bear witness to this truth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life, through the, through the foot of your word and your heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts, that we may merit an eternal reward in this life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and sins of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell, Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the wings of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you for joining us. And I'd like to wish you, if you live here in the United States, or serving anywhere around the world, I'd like to wish you a very happy and blessed Labor Day. I pray that you stay safe, pray that God keeps you and protects you, pray that God may inspire you in every good way to continue to do the great good you do every day. So always remember, God loves you very much. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Put the prayers of our blessed mother. May God bless and keep you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear friends, this mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm going to sing Abide With Me for our closing hymn. Abide with me, fast falls even tight. The darkness deepens. Lord, with me abide when all the help past fail and comforts flee. Help of the helpless.